A warm welcome to all of you who have chosen to tune in today. The focus of this short reflection is on the Gospel according to Mark for the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time, which I will now read. Jesus said to his disciples, In those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from the sky and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the end of the earth to the end of the sky. Learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branch becomes tender and sprouts leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, know that he is near at the gate. Amen, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But of that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. The 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time is the second to last Sunday in the current liturgical year. And as we approach the end of the liturgical year, it seems appropriate that the gospel for today focus on the end of time. The clear signs of the end, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will be falling from the sky, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken, have a way, I think, of getting our attention. This is very helpful for us because contemplating the end of the world and the end of time for each of us at our death is something that can help us focus our priorities. Thinking about the end of time is an opportunity for us to gain insight into what is truly important. That is, those things that will enable us to get to heaven, the end of our journey on earth. However, since the exact time of the end of the world is not known, constant vigilance is required along with patient endurance. In this gospel, Jesus tells his contemporaries that they must be constantly waiting and watching for divine presence and action because the time of completing God's plan of salvation is known to no one but God alone. Those that trust in that final coming must always be awake and watchful, listening to the word that does not pass away, and also trying to live in conformity with the words of Jesus. So what does it mean, though, to live in conformity with the words of Jesus? Well, living in conformity with Jesus' words means that we hear the teachings of Jesus and live them out. The two are related, interrelated, as a matter of fact. Because we have to live now to create a future for ourselves that we want and that God wants for us. More specifically, and from the Gospels in the preceding weeks, this means for us to accept the opportunities to experience how the last will be first and the servant of all, and to look for opportunities for service even when those opportunities involve suffering on our part. Living in conformity with Jesus' words means that we are to love God with our whole being and love our neighbor as ourselves. It also means that we are to give from our substance and not just from our extras or those things we have in abundance. And one way that we can be enabled to live in conformity with Jesus' words, and that's probably a thought that you have, well, if we have to do this, how can we do it? And one way is, um, that helps us to do that comes from our baptism. And I'll explain how. 
As a deacon for the past 20 years, I've had the opportunity to celebrate the sacrament of baptism with many families. Having this opportunity to baptize children has given me a deeper appreciation for the rite of baptism. In particular, one of the favorite parts of the rite of baptism for me is the prayer prayed after children receive the light of Christ as signified by lighting the baptismal candle from the Easter candle. And when that happens, there is a prayer that is prayed and that prayer is as follows. Parents and godparents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly. These children of yours have been enlightened by Christ. They are to walk always as children of the light. May they keep the flame of faith alive in their hearts. And when the Lord comes, may they go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. The <clears throat> this prayer looks forward to the end of our life on earth, and it was prayed when each of us was baptized. And of course, since most of us were baptized as infants, we have no recollection of that prayer. So I think it's, it's a neat opportunity to, to listen to the prayer and to be reminded of that, because it gives us a goal in life. And to meet this goal, we need to choose ways to live in conformity with Jesus's words by making choices that will bring us closer to him. And I was reminded of this prayer while reflecting on today's gospel with its emphasis on the end times. We are also reminded of the end times when we pray in the creed, you will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. The end times are also emphasized in the words from the mystery of faith in the Eucharistic prayer after the consecration, where we say and pray, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We know that Christ has died. We have only to look at Jesus on the cross to know that. We know from the scriptures that Christ is risen. And we do believe that Christ will come again. And when we come across a gospel such as the one for today, we might ignore it, saying that it really doesn't affect our lives. Or we might try to imagine what the end times would be like and how to predict when they will arrive so we can tailor our behavior accordingly. But both of these approaches miss the point. The scriptures are always there to help us with our daily lives and help us grow closer to our Lord. For this to happen, we must allow that our belief in the second coming to touch our present lives. And if we are honest about all of this, most of us usually don't give a second thought to that second coming. Maybe we think it's like a fairy tale or horror story, depending on where we are at that particular time. Or we may seem to think that it's just too far away, too uncertain to make any difference in our lives. But the second coming of Christ should be consoling to us. And the reason is Jesus will return to gather us to himself and take us home. What we are asked to do for our part is to be ready to welcome Jesus face to face, even though we don't know the day or the hour. Today's gospel is timely because we are approaching the end of the liturgical year. It is helpful because it calls us to place what we are doing now in our lives into the long-term context of eternity. In other words, how do my thoughts, words, and actions bring me closer to meeting Jesus with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom? That is a key question to consider. Most of us don't think about eternity. Very often we probably think about it more as we get older, especially if we have already lived longer than one or both of our parents. Generally though, we are taken up with the short term, the next few minutes, the next few hours, the next few days, 
And if we are young people, with that in mind, we might be thinking of playing sports, taking music lessons, doing homework, even though we might not like doing it, but it takes up time doing projects that are due and so forth. As parents, maybe we're preoccupied with work at home or on the job or bills to pay places to go, things to do. As grandparents, we probably realize more and more that we are getting older and that as we get older, we don't get better as we age. We might be thinking of how to deal with chronic health problems like arthritis, diabetes, limited mobility, and maybe even worrying about dementia. But every now and then, it is important to expand the vision of our lives from short term to long term. And as we approach the end of the church year, we are reminded today that life as we know it will come to an end. What seems important to us today could disappear like a puff of smoke. With this in mind, we should take this reflection as an opportunity to look at those things in our lives that take up most of our time and energy. Ask ourselves if they are really that important and how do they bring us closer to Jesus? And we can answer these two questions by taking time to talk with Jesus in prayer. Remember that prayer basically is the opening of our minds and hearts to God and then listening for his voice. We can start by asking ourselves, how much time do we spend in prayer now? And how often do we offer all of our thoughts, words, and actions to him and ask him to help us make what we offer him worthy of offering to him? And whatever the answers to these questions are, when we choose to spend more and more time with Jesus, the more we allow him into our lives, and then the less fear we will have of those last end days. And with this in mind, when our Lord comes at the end of our time, we can indeed look forward to going out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. I think that's just a wonderful thought. And I imagine that to be something like a grand party that we would all like to be present at. And so I suggest that we find a quiet place, choose to take more time in prayer, and may we be awake and watchful as we reflect on the ways for us to live in conformity with Jesus's words. And may our efforts truly prepare us to meet Jesus face to face.